Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at the school. In this video, we're going to be talking about improving the power of our sidekicks. Okay, now in Jun Gun, for those that are practicing that, you do have that move in there, and it's really important, as said with all the line work drills we've been doing and things like that, and the pattern related content, it's important that you make every single move as technically accurate as possible to allow it to pre present its best effect for you. Well, the sidekick's no different. So what I'm going to do is use this Wave Master as a demonstration. Uh, if you have access to a heavy bag or a Wave Master, great. If not, you know, just just shadow it, just practice on it on the spot, and uh, you never know, you might you might be able to find a way of doing so. But um, if you have access to the equipment, great. I don't recommend you do this on pads or paddles. Um, if you have an air shield, you know, if you've managed to gain access to an air shield or something, then fine. But any in any way, this is all about the technique of the movement. So. If I'm going to give this pad a blast with a sidekick, okay, have the guard up, chamber up, pivot, push. Yes, okay. But we want to think about improving that technique and making it much more devastating as such. Okay, so there's a few principles to remember. Of course, you, the main things that make a sidekick up are the pivot, the chamber, and the pushing action. All right, so the main three things. Okay, if you want a fourth one, I guess the re-chamber, but we, we know that anyway. So... Number one, the chamber. Whenever you do a side kick or a hook kick in general, doesn't matter if you're spinning, jumping on the floor, your leg has to be parallel to the floor to make this work, okay? So for instance, if that, if that was my foot and that's my knee, we need a straight line running across here. So the first thing we need to make sure of is that we're doing our chamber parallel to the ground. Now it doesn't necessarily mean we have to kick high. As a matter of fact, side kicks are best done going straight through the target. They can be done higher if you're particularly sparring against an opponent that's a bit taller than you, and therefore you need to chamber your leg to get a little bit higher. But in general, in general, kicks are going through the middle of the target or going down towards the legs, okay? So we go chamber, round. So as you can see, my knee is pointing towards you and my foot is pointing at my target. Now, straight away, if you do this, you'll probably find that depending on your flexibility, that you might either be here or you might be here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's up here or up here. It doesn't matter. What matters is that your knee, if you watch carefully, doesn't do that. So you can see my foot is higher than my knee. We mustn't let that be the case. Or like this. We need to practice religiously getting that foot and that knee on the exact same line, like so. So that's the first principle. Now, of course, the second principle is the pivoting, and that is in conjunction with the first principle, because without this one and two together, you can't, you can't effectively do number three. So from here, you do your chamber, but your pivot needs to be facing away from your target. So basically what I want is my heel to spin to face the target, like that. Now, the more you pivot round, okay, in a, um, in a sort of skeletal sense or structural sense, when you try to raise your leg, okay, with, without, without pivoting, so let's say, let's say I'm here and we, we raise the leg and we get to here, what happens is your leg gets to a point where it won't physically go any higher because basically what's happening is the bones in your, in your hips and your groin and so on and so forth are, you know, restricting each other, okay? So what we need to do is create that opening action. So to do that, okay, we go here. Now I pivot, pivot, right, so this is 90 degrees. So at the moment, if I force my leg to go up there, it will, but that leads to injury. 180 degrees is the golden rule, okay? So we go up and round. Now, because my foot is completely turned, it gives me the freedom to raise my leg up and down without any, you know, discomfort, all right? So that allows that to go there, okay? Now that brings us to the third principle. When you go into this kick now, because we said it's a pushing action, it needs to have somewhere to push from. So again, if I go here and go here, pivoting and chambering, but then I just go like that, I'm still only pushing with half the distance between where it could go. So if you think about where my hand is and where my leg is, all right, all this distance here is lost because the knee is just here. Okay, if that makes sense. So effectively my knee or my kick starts from midway between my perimeter or my outside of my body and then the target what we want is this 
to be right back here. So what happens is the side kick gets even more momentum and even more push. All right, the further it comes back, the more it can spring into action. All right, so we go up here. Okay, without that, we get this. But if we really, really pull this back, then it gives it even more thrust. Okay, so I'll do it a couple of times on each side. So it's up here, right back, okay? And I'll do one on this side now, round. Put in the knee back as far as you can, full pivot, three chamber, and down. Of course, when you are doing the side kick using the blade of the foot, so the blade is where your little toe runs down to your heel. So when you're kicking, you want to sharpen that edge by tipping your foot down slightly, okay? You feel it stretch across the, uh, the ankle a little bit, but it's nothing it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just the way you're trying to turn your foot. Okay, so that's the shape to allow it to pierce through the target. All right, and uh, the other thing is also make sure you don't go in with your toes first, okay? Sometimes we see a lot of people do the kick and they actually hit with the toes, not good it. Make sure your foot is nice and flat, tip and use the blade, okay? And of course, you know, re-chambering the kick as well, okay? So once you've done the kick, back in and down so you're able to you know, go into another kick or re-chamber it to be ready to defend against the kick coming towards you. It could be a number of things, okay? So, a couple more times. Chamber, pivot, like so. The guard is up, pulling the knee back as far as possible before the kick out, okay? And then, of course, the opposite side as well. Round, kick out, and down. And then to achieve maximum power from this, of course, you've got to use your breathing. So you breathe out right as you go to hit the pad or hit the target. But remember... Also intent, very important, making sure you go beyond what you see, okay? So it's up here, really giving it a push, there we go. And then that's all, okay? So, have that something you to, for you to think about the next time you practice your side kick, all right? If you're shadowing it and therefore not using a pad, just make sure you're warmed up, your joints are warmed up, hips, knees, ankles, so on and so forth, okay? And you're just on the spot, just practicing the move, and trying to really work on all of those principles combined, all right, so that you uh, you feel it more than anything else. Okay, you should you should be able to feel that the side kick is a lot more freedom. All right, so when it extends and comes back, you shouldn't feel any discomfort on your hips or anything like that. Okay, so let us know how you get on with that. Like and share the video as always, and uh, look out for more content in coming days. All right, take care of yourselves.